Hey all, February 20th, and I want to talk to you a bit about upper air charts. This is the analysis for North America at 500, 500 millibars up at about 18,000 feet. You can see we got one wave way out in the Pacific, another across the Canadian Arctic, a very large one running from Greenland southward, and a very small scale one across the Great Lakes. And you can kind of make out a jet pretty far up north in Canada right there and another one well to the south across the northern tier states. This is a very progressive pattern with a lot of medium-sized waves. What can we make of this? Well, there's a very interesting tool that I like called a Hovmuller diagram. Let me bring that up. Here we go. This is a Hovmuller di diagram for winter 2015 to 2016 up into about three days ago. That's about the latest I could get. So what is this thing? Let me shrink it just a little bit. This is, what it's showing here is height anomaly. We're looking at 500 millibars and the first thing that's pretty obvious here is longitude. See that right there? So 60 east, that's going to be out in uh, Asia. 120 east, that's going to be around Japan. 180 is going to be out in the Pacific. So for North America, we're looking at 120. This is uh, California. And out to 60 or 70, which is off the east, the east Coast. So that right there is North America all the way up. So where are we in uh, Texas? We're at about 95 degrees west. So we're in this area right there. So that's the area we want to watch when we're thinking about our weather. And this area out here is the Atlantic. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, what do we have on the y-axis? We have dates. So this is November 2015. And we go down, and there's Christmas right here. And go down further, New Year's. Then JFK Day is about right there, Valentine's Day. So the year progresses from top to bottom. So that makes sense right there. And then the colors that we're seeing here are height anomalies at 500 millibars. And we can basically just boil that down to troughs and ridges. So anything that's blue, those are going to be troughs. Anything that's yellow and red, those are going to be ridges. So pretty easy right there. We can see huh, right around 180 to 170 longitude west. Looks like we got this, uh, let me use red for that. Okay, try again here. R. Maybe I got to use another. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, there's this line right here kind of defines a permanent wave of a per permanent area troughiness. So, this is going to be a long wave. Pretty stationary right there. There's another one you can see right there off uh, in, in Europe. It comes down here and pokes out the other side. That's sitting at about zero, kind of like in the Europe area. And this one here is in the Atlantic. And when I'm talking about how far north or south, we're looking at 40 to 70 north. So that's going to be the kind of like the high temperate latitudes a little bit into the Arctic. So that tells us that we have right now we're going to be around the 20th, we're going to be way down here. So we can pretty much expect there to be kind of troughiness out in the Pacific from 150 to 180 and I don't know, maybe an indeterminate ridge at about 70, which would be around the East Coast. Not a whole lot going on here. Now the other thing I want to show you is short waves. You, you see these uh, skewed patterns? That's pretty interesting. Those are short waves moving through the flow. We can actually track that, and you can see see that uh, short wave moving here. When that runs across the long wave, that's going to amplify the short wave, and you see it kind of like bloom right there. And then it gets out of the long wave, moves to here, and probably on the other side, we're going to see that bloom like that. See. So you can, you can kind of use this to predict weather maybe weeks into the future. Not with any certainty, but 
you know you can kind of mess around with this and uh, I'll show you just how over in my paint program see that I took and, and painted out the short waves that are moving through the flow so right now we're along this line this is uh, today and you can see one wave comes through right now we would expect that short wave to be at about uh, that's going to be about 90 degrees 95 degrees west so that's going to be in the Texas area so what do we have okay we're looking from 70 to, to 40 right here and that does show a little bit of troughiness right there so that that actually kind of verifies but that trough doesn't extend all the way down to Texas and then there's another trough that's shown right here see this here we're expecting to see that right now at about oops, wrong one <laughs> let me shift that down just a little bit there's a southern trough you see it forms like that and then that comes down and intercepts at about 170 west so does that verify I'll pull the map out 170 is going to be around right here because that's 180 and that's 90 so yeah there's a trough right there already moving through the flow so that's a short wave moving through the long wave pattern and when does that reach here in Texas we can follow that on down until it intercepts the Texas latitude well north of Texas so it should be in the area around we go over to the right that's going to be around the 28th which on my calendar is Sunday next week so let's try this let's move the GFS forecast to Sunday next week that's going to be yeah the 29th and there it is yeah we kind of see a trough that's probably moving through another long wave pattern right there so that's uh, wondering if we can see that moving through the flow here trying to get uh, the meteo star thing to respond we're kind of stuck here but uh, let's see here yeah there we go so we're looking at the out in the Pacific and I'm scrolling this forward and we're trying to find that yeah I see this right here watch this as I move that forward you're gonna see it ride kinda of like over the ridge see it right there and then it kinda of goes over the top and now you can see it barrowing like that and uh, let's see and you can see it actually backing up there that's probably another wave coming through no. let's see it's kinda of hard to tell here but that's the kind of thing I like to do when I go through and look at these maps. You can kind of match up the waves that are moving through the flow and figure out what's a short wave and where everything's positioned. And you can actually take that Hovemuller diagram and you can kind of, if you wanted to, you could print out, print out a copy. And if you don't have like the latest three days, you can kind of draw this on, like kind of do your own. So that's certainly possible. And where do you get these diagrams? I'm going to show you the website right here. Let me go back a little bit. I have to get back to the selector. So there you go. Just Google basically time section plots using gridded, da da gridded daily data. That's going to be at Earth System Research Laboratory Physical Science Division. So it may just be easier to Google that rather than the link, which is kind of long. I'll show you another example of a Hovemuller diagram. This is for, let me pull up, let's see, where was that? I had a diagram for 1985. Let's see, I must have lost that. I'm going to pull that up really quick and show you something really neat. So I'm going to go in these uh, check boxes. You see this? That's how you select, uh, got the geopotential height. If you're going to go back in time, there's the century, 20th century reanalysis. You 
can set the uh, latitude and uh, top and bottom window. So I'm going to set that for 1984 going into 1985. Because there's a very interesting example of a retrograding long wave pattern. So I cr clicked uh, Create Plot. We're going to wait for that, to, for that to come up. Here we go. Yeah, you see these long waves? They're backtracking backward through the flow. And I've got a daily weather map series here that starts, let's see, goes from February 4th to February 10th. So we're looking at, uh, see, remember this is uh, North America here. We're looking for the 4th to the 10th, like that. So what are we seeing? We're seeing the long wave pattern around the 4th starting out at about, let's see, that's going to be about uh, 90, about 105 west, so that's going to be around Alberta. And then at the, at the end of this, we're going to find it at 125 west, which is going to be off the British Columbia coast. Okay, so that's what the Hovemuller diagram indicates for us. So what do we have here? We look at the upper air panel. And I lost my upper air panel. <laughs> there we go. A little bit laggy here. But yeah, this was a pretty record-breaking outbreak, especially for Colorado. And there is, remember we were talking about Alberta? So this, this, lat, this uh, longitude meridian right here, that's going to be where we're going to expect to find the long wave pattern. And there it is. So we're going to watch it retrograde now. So by February 7th, look at that. Yeah, we've got troughiness in uh, British Columbia. We're going to expect to find the long wave right around there. And any troughs that are showing on the map that are outside that line right there, those are probably going to be troughs. So there may be a bit of a trough there. That might fall a little bit outside the pattern, so those could be short waves right there. Now we're going to expect to find the long wave retrograding even further off the coast. So it looks to me like, even though we don't see the trough outlined here, if you look at the big picture, yeah, there's one side, there's the other. You can see that bowl shape. So that's about where that long wave is, but it's showing kind of a flat contour area. So this is probably a ridge moving through the flow, a short wave ridge moving through the long wave pattern. So is that indeed possible? Yeah, we move it up a day. Here's the very large kind of bowl shaped trophy pattern. There's the long wave ridge right there and that's heading for British Columbia and um, uh, Washington. So as that moves through and goes up the backside, gets out of the long wave pattern, that's probably going to build any ridges that are out there. It may start amplifying a bit, so that would be something to watch out for. So that's some really neat stuff. Definitely check out the Hovemuller diagram if you get a chance. Let's run through the forecast really quick. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about except for the upcoming cold weather. We do see that ridge building in British Columbia but it doesn't completely build well yeah it does right there this is around uh, February 25th because I was seeing some flow to the south kind of spilling over like that and I don't know that kind of tends to push the cold air outbreaks east of here instead of all the way down into, te into Texas Yeah, see that by the 29th, very strong flow. Got 30, 30 to 40 knots right there across the Rockies. So we, what I really like to see when we get strong cold air outbreaks is to see all that cut off. A very large ridge with most of the flow in Colorado, Nebraska, originating from up north. That's what I really like to see. So we don't quite have that. Let me go down to the sea level pressure. Scroll down here. There we go, surface winds and sea level pressure. And what does that show for the upcoming 
week. Well, starting out very fairly strong high pressure. Well, 24, that's kind of like, I'm not going to say strong, that's kind of in the medium range. So, yeah, so there's our cold front right there, linking up with that low over Ontario. And that's going to be one of our first cold air outbreaks into the central and southern U.S. And that gets all the way down to Texas by Sunday. See it right there? By Monday, kind of stalls out along the Gulf Coast. You see it like that. So there's probably going to be a little bit of cloudy weather, I think, possibly around Tuesday. Is that boundary kind of like lingers and we get return flow over that. And then we get a very strong low there developing for Tuesday. See that right there? Very sharp gradient right there. So that's probably going to be a very windy day for Amarillo and Dodge City. So let me paint out the fronts. Boom, down to this from the second, from the first to the second front right there, and if we have, I don't know if we're going to have any moisture, but when I see that back flow, that's good for tornadoes and that kind of thing. Um, it may actually be too cold for that, but that would be something to watch out for on Tuesday for Arkansas in that area. But yeah, by tu by Tuesday evening. Looks like a lot of cold air spilling on the back side of that low, and this low advances eastward. So there we go. That's going to be the first outbreak. Then we get high pressure for Thursday. Then going into Friday, look at that. We got even stronger high pressure, 1043 high. The cold front's probably going to be looking something like that. That's going to be coming down the back side of this low right here. Okay, we're starting to get out pretty far in the future. This is, you know... Getting a little bit, tiny bit in a fan, fantasy land, but we're into Saturday. There's the quarter outbreak heading for Texas. And look at that good 972 low, decaying, decaying included low that right there in Hudson Bay. You can see that filling up to 980. And we get strong, pretty good kick of cold air down to Texas, but looks like that stalls out again along the Gulf Coast. Probably the best push of cold air is going to be into the northeast U.S. And then we get out into fantasy land. Looks like it stays pretty stagnant for Texas. Lows moving west to east across Montana. See it right there? Going back and then forward. Got that little low scooting along pretty quickly into the Great Lakes area and looks pretty stagnant boring for Texas probably mild uh, somewhat warm weather so it looks like two good outbreaks over the next couple days and that'll probably be the end of winter and we'll start getting into a little bit of a spring pattern so that's about all I have here uh, hopefully you enjoyed the presentation and uh, if there's any other stuff you want to see, let me know, and maybe we'll try to do this again tomorrow.